It's awesome. All right, so when I do this drill, I will say to the gymnast, what did you do to keep your mind tight when your loose mind monster was trying to get in? What did you do? Can someone tell me what's one thing you did? She ignored her. So she blocked out her loose mind monster. Is that something that you can practice in the gym? I'll say. Ignoring your negative thoughts like, I'm not listening to you, talk to them. Yeah, yeah, that's something you can practice. Sure, that's a technique. What else did you do? She said the words and she mouthed the words. Now, that's an important tool because that's keywords. I mean, that's mental choreography. So, in terms of mental choreography, which is, if anyone's familiar with definitely my work, we talk a lot about mental choreography and writing out your routines and having like press, finish, look, breathe up, press, and having like an automated system of keywords. And keywords become a mantra or an anchor for the mind. So the mind is running all over the place and the mind is like a crazy ADD puppy, you know? And if you don't take make puppies busy, what do they do? They, they go destroy the house or whatever. You know, it's like my little son. When he was a baby, if I didn't keep him busy, he would go over to the cat food and put the cat food into the water of the cat water. You know, because I don't know if you've ever seen this, but like the water, like cat food and cat water goes like, like expands. You're gonna go try this at home, I know. But so if you don't keep people or your or crazy mind busy, it gets into trouble. To focus on the keywords and to mouth the keywords is an important tool. What, what else? What else did you do? Anything else? Yeah. Yes, so she defied what she was saying. So she fought back to her monkey mind. Like if her monkey mind said like, oh my gosh, I'm so tired today. She's like, no, I'm not. She, she tried to fight back with a positive statement. Awesome. So string and fishing weight and string and fishing weight with distraction are great tools to start to teach your athletes the power of the mind. Now Lori is a coach and she uses it in a lot of other ways as well. So first of all, you want to tell them? are games that I call focus games. So now I want to talk a little bit about resilience games that I play with the kids. So obviously, do we want our athletes to have grit? I mean, grit is a big buzzword right now, right? And so we want our athletes to be resilient and have grit. But I'm amazed at how many of our athletes have so much self-criticism and so much negative self-talk that it's hard for them to fight back. So one way that I help them build grit is through, through a couple of little exercises that I do. The first one that I want to teach you is I call it tight mind dog fight. And what I'd like you to do is uh, turn this paper over and put a line going down the middle of your page. And on one side, write tight mind. And on the other 
other side, write loose mind. Now again, so much of my work is about creating language for coaches and creating a language and fun. And this is, again, this is all, this lecture is all about fun activities with your kids. I mean, there's a lot of my work that might be a little more serious, or, but this is fun little tight mind activities. So again, this language of tight mind and loose mind is so important. Do you know when your athletes have loose body? Can you tell? And you say tighten it up, right? Can you see when your athletes have loose mind? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. What do you see when you have when they have loose mind? Walking, poor posture, arms crossed, you know, funny little gestures, pulling a leotard, not looking confident, whatever they're doing. So you can see loose mind. And just when you, like when you see loose body, correct it. When you see loose mind, you want to be able to give them a tool. So you might say, I, I can tell your mind is loose because you're having, you know, you're having trouble. You're balking on this. I want you to hop down the low beam and let's do three and tighten your mind on your keywords. You know, so you want to give them a tool that they can use too. Now, tight mind dog fight, this exercise, what I'd like for you to do for just a second is on your loose mind side, I just want you to do what I call a negative thought dump. And that is just write out some of your negative thoughts that are, that are more ingrained in you. Now, there might, they might be about a particular issue, like maybe you have the like, you have little beasts inside your head, like the why did I eat that beast, or the I'm tired beast. So just take a second, if you have some kind of negative thoughts, or if you're like a little complainer inside your head. And when I do this with kids, I have them do a negative thought dump. I like to get their negative thoughts out of their head and onto paper because I'm trying to disconnect them from that neural pathway and be able to observe their thoughts more than feel like they're on the train. It's almost like, again, we look at the mind like, is this beast kind of kidnapping them and taking them hostage into a negative neural pathway? And so much of this work is about building and embedding positive pathways with ritual and cues and letting kind of a negative pathway heal and not feeding a negative pathway. Does that make sense? I mean, we're not really talking about like that biology of things today, but does that make sense? So a lot of these drills, like this of what I'm gonna teach you, this one, is about not feeding a pathway that's not working for them. So when I have them do their negative thought dump, I almost always have them draw a little monster. So draw a little monster. This is your little beast. It might be a worry beast, or a frustration beast, or a fear beast. Now this is a little cute thing to do, but again, it has a purpose. The purpose is disconnecting them from their cyclical thoughts. Because when you're separate from something, and you can look and say, how interesting, I'm curious, I'm doing this with my mind. When you're separate, you have much more power. Does that make sense to you? And it, it's really the value of like learning how to meditate, of meditation. A lot of you know that I lived in a monastery in Nepal for three, or three months and then went in Thailand for a month. And a lot of what I worked on when I was with those monks was controlling my own crazy mind. <laughs> and really, again, disconnecting from my thoughts and being able to have a little more power over them. So you're not in the toilet swirling around with the stuff that's in there. You're kind of sitting on the lid, observing. I know it's a gross one. Did someone say, I like that? See me after. So you have your loose mind thoughts. You have your little worry beast. Now on the side, I'd like you to make some kind of tight mind thoughts, like write like some opposites, like I can do it, I'm strong, I'm confident, I'm fine. It might be here that you also help your athletes develop some kind of self-compassion. A lot of times I talk about tight mind, light mind. And again, I have like a language for everything. That's one of my gifts that I create. It drives my husband crazy because I make up little letters like, oh, 
like red light syndrome, I'll be like, oh, that's RLS. You know, I'll make up all these little acronyms. Thanks, Carol. So, Tight Mind, Light Mind is about helping these kids develop self-compassion. And that's about, sometimes your mind is like, I can do it, go get it. Sometimes it's like, it's cool, I'm fine, chill out. And I think if, if you can help yourself and teach them some kind of nurturing, then it really helps them to calm down, like what Dr. G talked about yesterday in his presentation about that freeze response. How many of you were in Dr. G's session? So, so helping them be able to have some kind of self-nurturing voice. A lot of these kids have a hard time with a self-nurturing voice. So that's under their tight mind as well. Now, sometimes during this part, I'll teach them like a little thought-stopping behavior that I call SBT go, which is just like stop, breathe, tight mind, go. Like I just teach them SBT go, SBT go. And just a little bit of a thought-stopping thing to, to help them. Stop what? I'm sorry. All right. Stop. Stop. Breathe. And then you're changing your loose mind to tight mind. Go. And I call that a flip it. And I'll have coaches cue their athletes by saying the words flip it. And stop, breathe, tight mind, go. So when I work with a team and we're doing this particular drill, I might have them do what you just did, and then I have them turn and face a partner. So turn and face a partner. Yes, you can do three if you want to do three. So this is a fun drill. They love this drill, and it totally gets the point across. And it's based on a Cherokee story that's the story of the two wolves. Many of you might know this story. It's a very famous Facebook meme. Um, and it's a Cherokee story about a teacher that, I'll, I'll tell this story to the athletes. There's a teacher, a Cherokee teacher, and he's talking to his students. And he says to his students, there's a war going on inside of my head. And it's a war of two wolves. The first wolf is my fear and my doubt and my frustration. And the second wolf is my joy and my confidence and my courage. And these wolves are fighting inside of me and they're fighting inside of all of you, he tells his students. And his students say, teacher, teacher, which one will win? Which one will win? And he says, the one that I feed. And I, these, the kids love this story and it becomes something that they take into their gym. Like, don't feed it, feed it. You know, I told you I make up all these things. <laughs> don't feed it, feed it. Or don't feed it, flip it. Or don't feed the bad wolf. So it becomes something that, that coaches can use in a moment to help cue the athlete back to some kind of mental tool, which is what's so important that you can do it in the middle of a workout. So I'll tell them the story, and a side note to this drill is it also, we're trying not to feed and further embed a stuck, yucky neural pathway. So when they can not feed that pathway, even if they can lift it and distract their mind a little bit, it's helpful. Because it helps it heal and get some, if the cow's walking out to pasture the same way every time, if it stops doing that, then maybe some grass can grow and that pathway can start to, that synapse can start to separate. So in this drill, we're going to time you for 30 seconds and you're going to do something called tight mind wolf fight or tight mind dog fight. And you're going to pick right now, the younger one of the two of you is going to be the bad wolf. All right. So first of all, you want to share your, share some of your negative thoughts with your partner. Go ahead and do that first. Yeah. Share your monsters. One, two, three, 
fight. You don't really touch each other at all. But, although I have done this drill by doing thumb wars, and it's been really interesting. You know, when you do this for 20 flipping years, and I, Dr. G knows more than I do, but when you, you you're just like, okay, how can I mix this up? How can I do something different? How can I, you know? So what you're going to do for this particular drill is I'm going to say start, and then you're going to um, you're going to fight with your partner. So your partner's going to be the big bad wolf. So your partner's going to say things like, "You're going to fall. Oh my gosh, you can't do this." Whatever was on their list, and then you're going to be like, "No, I can do this. I'm strong. I'm confident. I'm not listening to you." But it's going to be like a dialogue, all right? So like Lori and I did it really quick. Lori, can you like be a bad wolf? Or me a good wolf? Okay. Ready, one, two, three, go. No, no, I can do this. I can't do this. I'm strong, I'm confident, I'm gonna flip it. I can't do this, I'm strong. All right, so you get it? Thank you, Mark. I couldn't take it anymore. All right, ready? One, two, and, and have it, you can also be a dialogue. Like it, you can be, you can say one statement and then, free, and then be quiet too. Ready, go. She 
she's asking, do I ever have them, do I always have them write and do the fight right away or have them think about it and do the fight? Always I have them write it. See, it depends, like if I'm doing a clinic, I have like an hour or two hours. But as a coach, I think writing your big bad wolf thoughts and then teaching them like SBT Go or having them write, like I have people write this thing called a fairy godmother letter, which is just like a, a pump up letter to themselves. Or I think doing other mental toughness tools can be helpful. And then go back to the fight. I, um, when I do this, when I'm with a group, I usually do, I have them write their negative thoughts. I teach them some tools like SBT Go, and then I'll teach them about mental choreography keywords, and then I might end with this at the end of the clinic. Um, what was I gonna say? Hold on one second. Oh, and I also always have them visualize like I'll have them, and I don't really like people to see things, I like them to feel things in their body, which I'll talk about in a second. But I have them feel themselves having a bad day, and I have them practice SBT Go, so I have them practice flip it, and so they're developing the inner voice within them first, before they're doing it out loud. So another thing to take a drill like this, another way to take a drill, um, like this is something I call Battle of the Beast. And it's a very similar drill, but I'll talk about it in a second. So sometimes when I'm teaching a clinic and we're talking about getting into a competition bubble or a competition mindset, like as you're waiting for the judge, we'll talk a lot about getting into your bubble and how to get into a competition mindset. And I'll call it, you know, whatever, your Niagara bubble or your Flips bubble or whatever it is. And to get into a competition bubble, I usually teach kids that we use mind, body, spirit. We use the triangle of creation to get you into a bubble. And the way you use spirit is through the breath. So the word respiration comes from the word spirit, which is breathing in a feeling, like you're breathing in confidence. And I teach them about breathing in a feeling. That's the, that's the um, spirit part of the triangle. Then I teach them about the mind, which is saying certain statements, like you're getting ready to go on bars and you're breathing in confidence and you're saying inside your head, I got this, just like practice, just another routine. And then the body is kind of your face and body language and putting on that face and body language like you're gonna do a great routine. And starting to teach them emotional control drills using breathing, brain, and body. And I talk a lot and I use the keywords, get there, get there, get there. And they'll practice, they'll create their bubble, they have to breathe in what's their, what's their feeling they need. Maybe they need like a calm confidence, that's the spirit part. Then they'll, they'll write their sentence or sentences and they'll write their face and body language. Like I wanna put on my KBF, my kick butt face, or I wanna put on my Hakuna Matata face or whatever their best face is. And then we'll practice getting into the bubble, letting go getting into the bubble, letting go. And sometimes I'll have them walk around the gym and I'll say, get there. And they have to get there, breathing, brain and body and feel it. And then the coaches will be like, you're there, you're there, you're there. You might still look like a scared chicken. You stay, you know, and they'll say, go. And they'll walk around and say, get there. And they just practice because emotional control is kind of like leg lifts. I mean, you have to, when you're going to a state, like if I'm going to a state of California, I need a way to get there, which is breathing, brain and body. And if I need to practice getting there, and if I practice getting there all the time, then if it's a blizzard, I might still be able to get there. So it's the same with practicing getting into a great mental state. You gotta program that neural pathway to get there using breathing, brain, and body, which is again, the triangle creation, mind, body, spirit. I think that's how you create anything with mind, body, spirit. That's how you create a building you wanna build, that's how you create a, a job. So I try to use that a lot. So I'll have them create their competition bubble, and then I'll have them walk around and get there, and then I'll have them do this next game, which is called Battle of the Beast, which is very similar to the game we just did. So um, go ahead and stand up. We'll see how this goes. So you wanna be with your partners, and I'm gonna put you in a position that's hard to hold unless you're really activating your breathing brain and body. All right, so you wanna be breathing 
doing your breathing into your core. You're going to be saying your statements like, I got this, I'm solid. And then you want to have your body language on. So here's your position. It's toe to knee. It's arms overhead like a bubble. But you're in your bubble, right? And then it's eyes closed. All right, come down. So this is going to be your bubble, and your job is to get into your bubble and stay in your bubble. Meanwhile, your partners, again, are going to be loose mind monsters to you. So your partners are going to be saying things like, you're falling over. I'm going to tickle your armpit. Is that a booger coming out of your nose? That's kind of disgusting. You know. I, your job is to hold your bubble and stay in your bubble. And if you start to go out of your bubble, if you start to fall, you want to try to flip it, and you're going back to bubble. So again, you're just kind of working on emotional control, and it's fun. So when I work with the kids, I say, when you're down, and you're down kind of like a handstand contest. If you put your foot down, you're down. If you open your eyes, you're down. Or if you have more than five hops or scooches, you're down. Now, if you're being a loose mind monster, you have some rules. You can't touch them, and you can't scream. Like, you have to be talking. You can blow on them, though. But you have to be talking as if you're, like, talking in their ear. All right? So, um, let's just try for a minute and decide who's going to be the loose mind monster. Oh, I forgot to tell you. When you're down, I'm just going to say, you've been kidnapped by the loose mind monster, and then you go and become loose mind monster to other people. All right, now, we don't know each other very well, so we'll see how this works. But if you're on your team, we should end the first group with one person surrounded by little loose mind monsters, and then we'd switch, and then the other people would go, and it'd be one person surrounded by little loose mind monsters, right? All right, ready? So decide who the gymnast is and toe to me. Don't close your eyes until I say it. Arms overhead in the bubble. And get into your bubble. Breathe.